Hey guys, Steve Watts here with your fact of the day. Standing in front of a hybrid here. So, quick question. When were hybrids made? Do you know the answer? Bet you probably think you do. You're probably thinking it's somewhere around 2000. And, and if you're talking about the modern hybrids, you're actually right. But the first hybrid wasn't actually made in 2000s. It wasn't actually made in the 1900s. It was actually made in the 1800s. Uh, now, late 1800s, and you're about to see that here, but would you be shocked to find out with your fact of the day that the first hybrid was actually made in the 1800s? Steve, what's your fact of the day? Follow me here. I'm going to take you there. Okay, guys. So this is from energy.gov. So I uh, wanted to kind of go over this. So this will actually give us our answer on when the uh, first hybrid was actually created. So uh, this is actually talking about the history of the electric car. If we kind of scroll down here, and it mentions introduced more than 100 years ago, electric cars are seeing a rise in popularity today for many of the same reasons they were first popular, of course. So uh, if we kind of scroll down here a little bit more, you'll see the birth of the electric vehicle, right? And it talks about the in the 1800s, it led to the first electric vehicle on the road right here. It was a series of breakthroughs, right? from the battery to the electric motor. Um, so inventors, uh, or sorry, innovators in Hungary, uh, the Netherlands and the US, including a blacksmith from Vermont began toying with the concept of a battery powered vehicle. So this isn't something that's new. Um, it isn't a brand new idea with all these electric cars that are coming out. And this is something that's, you know, inherently to, to this century. It's, it's really not. It, it, there's different variations of it. Obviously the efficiency and things like that have changed a lot, but the idea, the concept, all of that was there. So, um, if you look at uh, Robert Anderson, a British inventor, uh, developed the first crude electric carriage. He said it wasn't until the second half of the 19th century that French and English inventors uh, built some of the first practical electric cars. Uh, here in the U.S., the first successful electric car made its de debut around 1890. So once again, like I said, it's not starting in the 20s, not starting in the 19s, starting in the 18s. 1890, thanks to, thanks to William Morrison. Chemist who lived in Des Moines, lived in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, his six passenger vehicle capable of a top speed of a whopping 14 miles per hour uh, was a little bit more than a electrified wagon, but it did help spark uh, interest in an electric vehicle. By the way, if you want to know the, you know, the sheer speed of 14 miles per hour, keep in mind, you can walk at roughly three miles per hour. Um, depending on a few variables, of course, but yeah, you can walk at about three miles per hour. So this, this would help you just a little bit, right? So over the next few years, vehicles from different automakers began popping up across New York, uh, across the U.S., New York City, even had a fleet of more than 60 electric taxis. Uh, most of us that were born within the last, you know, probably 50 years or so, we don't know this. <laughs> It's just, it's not something that was ever really talked about because the efficiency wasn't there, the longevity, it just wasn't there. So, um, but the electric cars were at their heyday by 1900. So, I mean, this is, this is a long time ago, guys. And I mean, this is well over a hundred years ago that there were electric cars driving around. So, uh, and it accounted for a third of all vehicles on the road. So there's a lot of people that think that that would be a very lofty goal to have for right now, to put a third of all vehicles on the road to be electric, right? But during the next 10 years, they showed long, they showed strong sales. So here is where you find out, you know, early rise and fall of the electric car. So it's important to understand the development of personal vehicle, other options, uh, available at the turn of the 20th century, the horse was still the primary mode of transportation. People couldn't afford cars. Um, that was something that was, you know, it, it, the stuff that was out there was extremely expensive. So, um, and I, I know that, you know, because uh, most people stuck with horses. They walked a lot. They, you know, uh, take other means of transportation. But, man, the gasoline car until the Model T came out. Man, it, it was expensive uh, for the average person. So uh, steam was tried and true to energy source. Of course, you had rail too, by the way, um, that a lot of people did too. But uh, uh, having proven reliable for powering factories and trains, some of the first self-propelled vehicles in the late 1700s relied on steam. 
yet it took to the 1870s for the technology to take hold in cars. Part of it's because it wasn't practical, so it required long startup times. Yeah, you had you had to get the boilers hot for steam. It had to be very hot to produce steam. So, uh, you want to go somewhere? Let's get up, and 45 minutes later, we're ready to go. So, um, and then you'd have to refill it with water. So, once again, limiting the range, right? And then obviously you'd have to, whether it was coal or something else that kept the boiler up, man, you'd have to worry about that too. So. Um, electric vehicles came on same time the gasoline powered vehicles came on. Um, the internal combustion engine, it's a, once again, in the 1800s. Gasoline cars had promised they weren't without their faults. They required a lot of manual effort to drive. There was no such thing as power steering, guys. These things were hard to, to maneuver, right? Um, and uh, you had to know what you were doing, right? So changing gears wasn't an easy task you had to hand crank the front you know you had to go to the front stick that crank in and and crank the engine and, and it made it difficult for a lot of people to operate them I and mean, they were noisy and there was no such thing as a catalytic converter so they spewed a lot of exhaust if you ever look at old videos you can actually see where um they were just kind of pumping out that black smoke so um yeah so electric cars didn't have any of those issues of course um, but uh, they were quickly popular with urban residents, especially women. Um, they were perfect for short trips around the city, and the poor conditions outside cities meant that few cars of any type could venture farther. So you weren't really leaving your city um, to go somewhere, like on a trip or a vacation or that, just because there wasn't a real easy way to get there, uh, probably other than rail, to be quite honest with you. So... Um, People gained access to electricity in the 1910s. It became easier to charge the electrical cars. Um, and it said uh, they adding to their popularity with all walks of life, including some of the best known and prominent makers of gasoline cars. Um, a 1911 New York Times article pointed out. So uh, many innovators took note of the electric vehicle's high demand, exploring a way to improve it. Uh, for example, Ferdinand Porsche, founder of the sports car company of the same name, right uh, developed an electric car called the p1 in 1898 around the same time he also created and here's our answer guys he also created the world's first hybrid electric car that is a vehicle powered by both electricity and a gas engine so that's when he developed it, it was right around 1898 it was actually 1899 by a lot of accounts that i saw and it actually went into production so um that was the first hybrid vehicle that you could buy but it was expensive so um so it says that uh electric vehicles were superior technology uh, they worked to build a better battery even henry ford of Ford Motor Company, of course, um, who was friends with Edison. So he shows that Thomas Edison was one of the inventors that was working on it. Um, partnered with Edison to explore options for a low-cost electric car in 1914. Um, but, obviously, Henry Ford had a mass-produced Model T. Like I said, that it, it changed the world. The Model T literally changed the world. It made a car that was affordable for the average person and and you know this is the the gasoline car cost 650 dollars while the electric car sold for 1750 if kettering introduced an electric starter eliminating need for the hand crank and the rise to more gasoline powered vehicles so um yeah so the model t pretty much killed the electric car it was easier to use easier to maintain you didn't have to worry about charging it put gas in it it was very easy to go but the whole point of talking about this was that um the electric car in the hybrid version of the electric car was developed by Porsche in 1898, 1899, and it became a production vehicle. And I'll show you a couple pictures of it. And you can see the, the vehicle that they actually sold. So um, now if we look here, gasoline shortages spark interest in electric vehicles. Um, next 30 years or so, I mean, they're, they're talking about the, the embargoes and stuff like that. But the point was, and, and the point of this whole post here, isn't that, um, you know, and, and they're talking about environmental concerns and that, but the point is that we've gone through these cycles and we had the electric car was out. You know, there was, you know, a third of all cars that were produced were electric cars. And then people are like, oh, hybrids. Well, your Prius was really, you know, between the Prius and the, and the Honda Insight, they both came out right around 2000, right? And obviously the, 
The Prius did much better. It had a better reliability rating, things like that. But both of those cars came out right around 2000. So when you ask somebody, when did the first hybrid car come out? The first hybrid car, everybody thinks, well, somewhere right around 2000. Why? Because they think of the Prius, especially, and then they think of the, the Honda Insight, and then they're like, well, it's been about 22, 23 years now of hybrids being available on the market. Really, it hasn't. There, there's a lot of things that people don't think about being hybrids. I did a video on this channel not too long ago about the USS Silversides uh, submarine. Well, if you consider that, that's technically a hybrid as well. It uses a gas engine to charge batteries to actually push, you know, the, the propeller. Well, that was in the 40s, right? So, obviously, that that was before 2020 or 2000s, right? You know, that was, you know, 1940s, and, and that's how most of the submarines worked. They ran a gas engine while they were on top of the water, and that gas engine would put power into the batteries and when they submerged they ran on the batteries why because you couldn't you don't want to use your usable air for combustion and then if you were to push the exhaust out of it you have all these bubbles going up and telling people exactly where the submarine is you can't run a combustion engine underwater it has to be that type of a system so hybrids are around in a lot of different ways that same type of engines used on railroads right uh, so your diesel uh, diesel railroads, diesel locomotives, they run that same type of engine to charge batteries, and then the batteries turn the wheels. So the engines normally, in a lot of these cases, in these big situations, are not actually turning the wheels. It's actually the motors from the electricity. So um, when you start considering about what's a hybrid and, and when hybrids came out, and um, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't want a hybrid. Why? Because it's too new a technology. It's really not that new of technology. It has advanced a lot um, and gotten more efficient. It's gotten, you know, obviously more technical. The, you know, the Prius is actually one of the most technologically advanced cars that's out there. It's, you know, it's gotten that, yes, 100%. But to consider, you know, that most people, if you ask, and even people that have been around a while, if you ask them when the first hybrid came out, they're not going to say 1898. And if you ask them who produced it, they're also not going to say, you know, Porsche. They're going to say Toyota. They're going to say Honda. And they're going to say early 2000s if they, if they know. Or they'll just say, I don't know, 10 years ago. That's something else. I've asked people the question. So, I don't know, 10 years ago. Well, 10 years ago is, you know, 2012. They were well into the mix of hybrids by 2012. So, yeah, so just kind of an, an idea. It's just a fun fact of the day that um, people don't realize that, you know, we're well over 120, almost 124 years since the development of the first hybrid. So what do you think? First hybrid made by Porsche, 1899. Steve Welch, fact of the day, guys. Give me a like, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Have a great one. Bye.